Hi guys, it's Jill, and welcome back to the Equine and Theory podcast. On this week's episode, I want to talk about something that I just keep thinking about for whatever reason, and I want to share my thoughts on it with you guys. Um, and that topic is ulcers. So, without any further ado, let's just jump into it. Alrighty guys, so first things first, it's Tuesday that I'm recording this podcast and I just woke up because last night I was laying in bed and had a mild panic attack because I was like, oh my god, I forgot to record the podcast episode. I have had so much going on this week because later this week I am leaving to go tour the University of North Texas because I would like to do my graduate program there. And, uh, yeah, I have just been all over the place. And all last week I was feeding the horses and doing stalls, and that is quite a job. We have 50 horses here, I think, but only 30 of them have, like, grain. The rest are just on, like, regular pasture. But uh, that was still a lot of horses to feed and care for and water troughs to fill. And, oh, my God, it was a lot. So um, I'm just getting back into the swing of things here. So... Yeah. Oh, and also, last thing that I have to do regularly is I'm in an online class right now for over the summer. It's astronomy. It's a very, very fun class. <laughs> um, so, anyway, it's been a little bit all over the place, and I just completely forgot. So, now I am recording it this morning. But, anyway, it is a topic of great interest to me because I recently learned quite a bit about it. Now, fair warning, if it isn't already obvious... I am not a nutritionist nor a veterinarian, so take everything that I say with a grain of salt. However, I will say that I feel like I've done quite a bit of research into this topic, so I feel like I can talk a little bit about it and at least get maybe the listeners on the right track if you are not familiar with ulcers and how common they are. So I guess that's something to start with. Um, Most of the statistics that I see say that about 60 to 70 percent of all horses have ulcers. That is a ridiculously high statistic and it depends on if you believe this other one um, because Ulcer Guard obviously has motivation to be a little bit biased but um, on their package it says 60 percent of all horses have ulcers and 90 percent of all race horses have ulcers. So Obviously, there is potential for a little bit of market bias there. (laughs) Um, They uh, obviously want to sell more of their products, so if you think that every horse has ulcers, then they will sell. However, I will say that um, I have a tendency to believe that. (laughs) Um, And there are so many things that can cause ulcers, and um, to name a few off the top of my head, it would be something along the lines of being stalled 24-7 can easily cause ulcers, and there are a few reasons for that. One, because maybe they're not getting the social interaction, um, and that could be potentially stressful for them. Um, Not being allowed to move and stuck constantly could be stressful. Um, And often when we stall our horses, we maybe give them Uh, like a flake of hay in the a.m., a few flakes, and then in the p.m., a few flakes as well, along with their grain. So then there's this gap of time in between where the horses aren't eating anything, and that is a problem. If you do not know why that is a problem, let me explain. So horses are designed to graze all the time. So save for when they're sleeping, um, they are designed to be eating all the time, and their stomachs secrete acid to digest all of that food 24-7. So they are constantly secreting acid. And if there is nothing for that acid to break down, it can start being a problem for the lining of their stomachs. And that's where we see ulcers and those problems coming into play. So naturally, when I was younger, I was always told to, um, you know, treat with omeprazole or this ulcer product or that ul- ulcer product. <laughs> And the problem with that is I never made any lifestyle changes. So, you know, I had Zoe or Bo or whomever, whichever horse I had at the time, um, and we would have them during the summer, we'd have them in stalls during the day and out at night. And then in the winter, in stalls during night and out during the day um, due to the heat. So that was that was how we were 
operating. And so every time I treated with omeprazole or ulcer guard or whatever to try and treat the ulcers, the problem was I wasn't adjusting for the lifestyle. So um, I only just recently learned to do this this year with the help of Adele, the willing inkline. And if you're not tired of me saying her name yet, I don't know what to tell you because she she is my mentor and she tell me all the things she's my trainer and she is a wealth of information so free promo for miss adele so anyway what i learned is you are essentially wasting your time treating ulcers if you cannot make the lifestyle changes or will not um because if the thing that is causing um either stress or that over secretion of acid with nothing to break down in the horse's stomach then I mean, you might treat it a little bit, might make it feel a little bit better, but then it's just going to come right back. Um, So that is my understanding of how ulcers work. So um, the horse that I really worked with to improve this was Mac. Um, Zoe's been out 24-7 for quite a while now, and um, she's just hanging out outside, and um, her stomach situation has improved drastically. She's not making a mare face when I girth her up anymore. She's not, you know, just being naturally grouchy. She's not, um, as tight in her back or as tail swishy. Um, and I think it's important to maybe discuss a little bit of the symptoms of ulcers or the things that you might see that indicate that your horse may have them. So they're a little broad, but, um, Generally, your horses are girthy. They don't really like to be touched. Um, And in the case of Mac, he was super, super hot and cold. Like, I would just be working with him at Liberty in his paddock, and all of a sudden he would just blow up. And I was like, (laughs) what? Um, It was the weirdest thing, because I rarely do I ever work with horses that are that unpredictable. And it was like, I just couldn't tell when he was going to explode or not. It all just happened so fast. Like with most horses, they'll maybe pin their ears or arch their neck or like shy away a little bit before something happens. But Mac would just, his facial expression wouldn't change. And if it did, it was all in the same second. And um, he, there was a time where he was striking out and he was biting so much. Biting is another huge, uh, huge indicator of ulcers. Um, and he would just like, just like chomp, chomp at you. And, uh, he only ever bit me once. Um, but he would just kind of like, just get mouthy and it didn't really seem to be all there. Like he just seems like he was preoccupied almost. And, um, the training was just like, not, (laughs) not a thing because he was just, it, I think that the best way to just, describe it is that horses are prey animals and um when they are hurting or are compromised in any way their um, reactivity and defensiveness gets a lot increased good sentence but so think about it if a horse is in the wild maybe and they have a stomach issue going on or they um, have a hurt leg or something they're going to be on a lot more high alert than other horses because they're compromised and you know survival of the fittest. And if you're not the fittest, you might die. So they got to be on high alert 24 seven. So Mac was very much fitting into this category. He just, I can't stress enough how different he is now because he just like, it was a little bit like unnerving. I just never knew what he was going to do. And, um, it's, it's not fun to be around. So there's biting skin sensitivity, girthiness, um, hot and cold reactive behavior. And, um, I realize that those are broad, but when they all present together, you've got a pretty clear sign that something is wrong. If not ulcers, something's up. Um, so I am a firm believer at this point that horses do not act what we call quote unquote badly for no reason. Behavior doesn't occur for no reason. If a horse is bucking or is biting when they get girthed up or biting in general or, you know, just like striking out, like those aren't things that horses do. I mean, outside of playing with one another, maybe, but like for the most part, horses are pretty much just content to just hang out and graze and do whatever. They're very peaceful animals. So when they are not being peaceful, I feel like that's cause for alarm, at least to look into 
what we can do to help that situation. And, you know, you can't always go straight to training. Like, for example, I talked a few episodes back about behavioral problems and positive reinforcement solutions. Um, with the girthiness, if your horse has ulcers, you can't correct that problem with training. Um, because the horse is still going to feel the pain. And the best you could do is create an artificial situation where the horse has its ears perked, but is still feeling the pain. Um, so it's not going to be real necessarily. So what you want to do is rule out the, um, the ulcers, correct it, um, fix it for the horse and then train, um, out the conditioned behavior because the girthing can be, um, uh, like it can be a painful association. It can have a negative reminder of the pain they used to feel. They can anticipate it. So, um, you've got to make sure that the pain is gone and then you can, um, show them and help teach them that this is a good thing and, um, you'll get rewarded for this. So, um, those are just a few of the symptoms and the, uh, (laughs) the after, but, um, how we treated Mac, um, was we didn't scope him. Um, I just, um, was referred to a video that I'd actually seen before and had done before, um, from, I think his name is Mark DiPaolo. Um, and he runs DiPaolo Equine Concepts. And that website is absolutely wonderful. Um, I'll link to it in the show notes and you can go to it and look at their health library. They have all sorts of different types of health, but for this particular podcast, I focused on the digestive health section and they discuss, um, they discuss how ulcers happen, how to prevent them, what to do and how to look for them. So he has a video up that's, uh, pretty iconic video in the ulcer department at this point and he shows you how to palpate for ulcers so essentially touching the horse in certain areas to see if they're reactive and he goes through three different horses that are at three different levels of um, ulcer pain and ulcer intensity so you can see the difference between really severe horses and horses that aren't ulceric at all Um, so I went out and I went up to Mac and you know, poked him in those areas, (laughs) not poked, but like, you know what I mean? And so I palpated him and the results were, um, conclusive to say the least. He definitely had ulcers. So, um, especially in the area between his two front legs running down his, um, chest belly area, like where our sternum would be, I guess. Um, he, he just like turned around and immediately was like, <laughs> and made a biting motion. And I was like, Hmm, interesting. And, and he was so funny about being touched. Like anytime I touched him, he just was like, stop, stop, please God, stop. And it's hard to be a positive reinforcement trainer when that's one of your reinforcement strategies, you know, scratching them if they don't like it. And, um, you know, some horses obviously just don't like it, but, um, I think Max was more due to, um, being ulceric and making his skin sensitive. Um, so now he loves to be touched on his face and rubbed and have his eyes rubbed and his neck rubbed. And, um, so there's definitely been a huge change in that regard. So after palpating him, I talked to my boss and was like, okay, we got to get on this. So we got, um, 10 tubes of ulcer guard and I gave him one every day um, for 10 days. And I'm not entirely sure. Um, you know, I talked with Adele about it and she's, um, I believe she said she did it for 14 days and, um, I'm not sure what length is appropriate. I would be more keen to trust Adele than me. Um, but I did 10 days and we made a whole bunch of changes to his diet and his, um, his, uh, mostly just his diet because, uh, she wants him to come in during the day. Um, so we just had to make sure that he had enough hay in his stall, alfalfa, and we made a bunch of changes to, um, our feeding protocol with him. So ulcer guard for 10 days and changing everything and anything that we could. So, um, for his feed, I actually just made a video on my YouTube about it. You can go watch that now. I'll link to that in the show notes as well. So now we feed a variety of products that include magnesium, ginger root, slippery elm bark, turmeric root powder, chamomile. Like there are so many things in what we're feeding now 
that um, are designed to help improve gut health and um, just keep the horse like a well-oiled machine. And like I said, we feed constant hay for Mac and have alfalfa available. And then we've got the same thing going on for Zoe. I didn't treat her with ulcer guard, however. I just made lifestyle changes. So for her, I just put her on 24-7 turnout, pulled her shoes off, and uh, we give her hay. She's got access to grass 24-7, and um, she gets AM and PM grain. That's just um, a really low percentage of sugar. That's another huge thing is um, having little or preferably no sugar in your grain um, is a really big factor because horses' bodies do not process sugar well, um, according to the articles that I've read. Um, so, yeah, that that is a huge thing. So check your food labels. If you're at, like, 5 or 7% of sugar in your feed, might take it down a notch. Um, we currently feed a 3%, and I've seen a huge change in their personality. So I'm going to say that that is... My baseline, I would prefer to not have any sugar at all, but I am not in control of what we feed out here, so that's the best we got at the moment. But I still think it accomplishes the purpose. Um, so um, those few percentages can make a huge difference. And, um, you know, like I said, if you treat for ulcers with omeprazole or ulcer guard and don't change the horse's lifestyle, if they're still not getting enough forage access or they're not um or they're not their food hasn't been changed to a low sugar food or they're not getting any help to coat the inside of their stomach then ulcers are probably going to come back additionally if they lead a pretty stressful life like they're in a really hard work regimen maybe for some horses that could also induce the um ulcers so there are a lot of things to consider but I think that the most important thing to do is just go out and check your horse for ulcers. Even if you're like, we don't have any of those behavioral problems you mentioned, Jill. Your horse may present the, or present his symptoms differently. So um, I would just go out and make sure you're careful because they can kick out or bite at you if um, things are not feeling great. Um, it's kind of like poking someone's bruise. They're like, I'll punch you. Stop. <laughs> um, so go out and check them. Make sure that you're safe about it. Um, I would highly recommend watching the DePaulo Equine Concepts video. Um, you can either type it on YouTube, how to palpate a horse for ulcers, or you can, um, follow the links that I will provide in the show notes. Um, any way that you can get there to find that video, um, I really recommend doing. And then, um, read over the articles. I'll link them in the show notes. It's on DePauloEquineConcepts.com. Make sure you don't go to their WordPress blog site thing, um, because that's wrong. Just go to the DePaulo Equine Concepts um, and look at their health library. Like I said, got a link to it in the show notes, but if you're going to be stubborn and do it on your own, then um, go to the health library and click on Digestive Health. And there are two articles there that are very, very thorough and discuss everything that you need to know to help with prevention, aftercare, and all of that. Um, but I think that... Um, we get really desensitized in the horse world to just, you know, the, this is how the horse is. Oh, she makes a mare face. Oh, he bites or he's mouthy or he's just naughty or she's, you know, cranky or she's just always got a tight back or, you know, whatever. We like to label our horses instead of looking for the problem. And um, I think that this upcoming generation of horse owners has probably been one of the best and in so far as like, no, let's not just tell the horse <laughs> like this is who you are. You're naughty or you're grumpy or you're tight or whatever. Like instead, we're starting more and more to look at why is the horse acting like that? Why is the behavior occurring? And um, like I said, I'm a firm believer that horses don't do things for no reason. They're not just you know, crazy or bad or naughty or grumpy, like there's always a reason and um, we just have to know what to look for. And um, I think ulcers, ulcer hunting <laughs> is a good place to start because the percentage of horses that have them is ridiculously high. Um, so I would highly recommend checking your horses for it. Make sure that your food is a low sugar food. You're feeding your horse a forage based diet, ideally. Um, and 
that they're just they're getting all their needs met. Um, if your horse has to be stalled all the time, make sure that they're able to get out, like whether you have to come get them and just take them for a walk, let them graze. Um, they have access to hay 24-7 and, um, you know, that they're able to eat and graze and keep their stomachs happy and they're not just sitting around for, you know, several hours <laughs> without having access to food. Um, because that can be really detrimental for them. And I know that there are some horses that we might have an issue with foundering or something of that sort. And I would recommend reaching out to a nutritionist, a professional, because I am not someone who is well versed in how to deal with that. I'm sorry. I know. And now I've probably just anybody who's got a horse that's foundering, you're like, oh no, they have probably have ulcers too. Um, so just make sure you talk to your vet or somebody, um, who knows what they're talking about. Um, that doesn't always mean your vet. Um, but just make sure that you, um, sort that out because I, I don't know what to tell you, but I, I don't want your pony to get ulcers. So, um, and you know, some horses are more prone to them than others. And, um, I typically see it the most in thoroughbreds, but, um, I, I know it can appear in any and all breeds. Um, thoroughbreds just tend to run hot, you know? Um, but yeah, and they can also typically be fed a lot, um, which is kind of an issue we're running into with Zoe because she's a little tubby bean lately. So, um, having her have constant access to, you know, hay and grass and then have her grain AM and PM, like, she's a little chubby bird. So it's, it's kind of difficult to just give her food all the time. But so far she's keeping her good weight and, um, exercise is on its way. Um, we're working towards that and doing more and more every time. Um, so yeah, I don't know. There's just, there's a lot of components to, um, to making sure that the ulcers stay gone. Um, it's not just a one and done treatment. Oh, they're never coming back. And once a horse has had ulcers, they are more likely to get them in the future. Um, so just make sure that you keep all of that in mind. Look at the links that I linked, watch the video where I discuss, um, how I feed the horses and, yeah, I think that wraps up this episode, guys. I'm sorry it's a little bit short. I have a lot to do today because, like I said, tomorrow I'm leaving to go tour a grad school, so I am just all over the place. But I just wanted to quickly talk about this because I feel that it is important. So I hope you all have a wonderful day and enjoy the podcast. Let me know if there are any other topics that you would like me to discuss. I believe on the Anchor app you can send me a video message, and if it's something that I feel like I can talk about, then I definitely will. So um, go ahead and head over there. Make sure you leave me a positive review. Um, it helps boost the podcast and the algorithm so other people can find it. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Be sure to check us out on social media, Jet Equitheory everywhere, and jetequitheory.com is my website, which has plenty of links to everything you could ever need to get started with positive reinforcement, I think. At least that's the goal. Thank you guys so much for listening, and have a great rest of your week.